We are now ready for agenda item 14, Juneteenth Independence Day resolution. And I know that uh, Council Member Ashton, you had comments. Ms. Kimball, did you want to start off or just jump to comments? Uh, Ms. Hapte is going to handle this agenda item as well. Okay, my apologies, Ms. Hapte, sorry. It's okay. Okay. Um, so this, this agenda item is a, a follow-up to the July 6th meeting, um, Mayor Council meeting, where uh, there was a heavy discussion on Juneteenth. And, um, and I, you know, on a personal note, I want to say thank you to the Mayor and Council for providing such a great overview. Uh, I learned quite a bit about, uh, about the day and the commemoration from, from that meeting. Um, so the end product for this was that uh, the discussion the mayor and council had was twofold. One was to have a, a resolution um, designating this day um, as, a, as a city holiday, but also discuss um, activities uh, that would help celebrate and commemorate the day. Um, again, uh, to borrow council member Ashton's uh, words, uh, it should be a day of reflection um, and, and not just a, and not just a city holiday. So in this document, um, the staff person that uh, developed the, the report, uh, Ms. Kelly, who did a great job on it, um, provides several examples and potential activities for your consideration. Um, and so with that, I, I turn it over to you guys. Thank you, Ms. Hepta. If I could just ask a couple questions, I notice a difference in the type on um, the resolution. So were there comments made by members of the body and changes incorporated in the original? I, don't, I didn't bring the one that was in our book, you know, previously. Or is that just in the type? I, I don't believe changes have been incorporated. Um, is Cindy Walters on? Cindy, are you on? from our city attorney's office. Cindy Walters? Ms. Walters? Okay, I guess not. I'm That's sorry, I'm talking. on. I am on, I just- Oh good, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> turn my welcome. camera on, sorry. Um, welcome, welcome. Thank you, I believe this is, um, I don't believe there have been any changes um, since this went through the agenda review process. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Ashton, I see your hand. Thank you. I did email um, last week some potential changes. Uh, and the spirit is uh, just hoping that the commemoration will not only reflect slavery, but also speak life to the resilience and contrib contributions of African American communities and serve as an opportunity to promote action toward greater equity. And with that in mind, I uh, made some suggested revisions of a paragraph that speaks to uh, in the resolution that the city will mark this date with special events and celebrations to encourage Rockville. I added staff and community to learn and share stories, recognize and commemorate the ends of slavery in the United States. And then I also add elevate and celebrate African-American history and contributions and take action to actively promote equity. And I, I sent that in the body of the email to our city attorney's office and to my colleagues. Uh, th thank you for that clarification. The one, and I had uh, mentioned this earlier to the body, I really am concerned about the sixth whereas. Um, I think it diminishes the ongoing bias that has um, impacted our communities of color in education and um, greater opportunity. And I think to put it in here in this way makes it seem like we think it's okay. And, and maybe it's just me as a white woman reading this, but the way I read it, it, it literally grabbed me and I was like, success is gained through education and greater opportunity. Wait a minute, we're, we're all talking about the need so to quit the, the you know, the, dis, the uh, deserts and, and make the ceiling, glass ceilings go away and, and open the CEOs and the positions to, to people of every, every race and creed. And so I, maybe I'm wrong and you all don't agree, but that's just the way it, it just grabbed me. Um, Councilmember Miles. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, 
I'll just take a step back and make two observations uh, and then a, a recommendation. The first is that action item or agenda item 13 was the one we just discussed, and it correlates to the 13th Amendment. It's like the abolition of slavery. This is the 14th agenda item, which is Juneteenth. And the 14th is the 14th Amendment, which is due process. So I think it's just interesting how the how that kind of happened that way. Um, I'm certainly open to any uh, revisions that you all recommend in terms of improving the resolution. I want to thank Councilmember Feinberg uh, for bringing this item before us. The only recommendation I would have is in the first, the fourth whereas clause. Uh, uh, I personally have issue with the, the use of the word slaves because it suggests that uh, they're not people. Uh, okay. So I would say maybe perhaps change the wording to match the third clause of enslaved people or people who have been enslaved. Um, that's the only sort of recognition I have about the, the wording. I have another um, observation about sort of the implications of it, but I'll stop there. Thank you. Councilmember Feinberg. Thank you. I had to unmute. I actually am remembering so far so good for tonight. Um, Councilmember Miles, I, I like that change in the one, two, three, fourth bullet. It's similar to the same kind of, as opposed to saying um, disabled people, people with disabilities or people who suffer from disabilities, something like that. So I personally would be fine to say, um, and I think this is what you said, Amer African Americans who had been enslaved as opposed to slaves or something along those lines that for me is absolutely uh, on point. And Council Member Ashton, um, I tried to write down all your changes that you had. Um, they sounded fine for me, but um, if we get to that point, if you wouldn't mind reading some of those again, I tried to jot them as quickly as I could. And um, Madam Mayor, on the fourth one, uh, the uh, I'm sorry, the sixth one that you were speaking about, it didn't hit me that way, but again, you know, it's always who reads it and how you read it. That's sort of what we're talking about. And if there's a chance that somebody would feel that way, I'm okay to make a change to that. Thanks, Council Member. And I agree with the um, suggestions you made. It, that's up to, to others. However, on the 6th, I just added this in my, in my quick scratch. I wonder what you all think. Um, celebrates, celebrates successes. Delete the celebrates successes gained through education and greater opportunity and demands the further removal of barriers to equality. I, I just think we need to acknowledge I'm fine with that. a long way to go. Council member, thank you. Council member Ashton. I uh, fully support that um, as well as the, the comments on my colleagues. Um, and I also just uh, resent the email with the changes I had. I can also reread them uh, for the request of Councilmember Feinberg. Um, so I added in staff as well as a clause at the end. So that the city will mark the date with special events and celebrations to encourage Rockville staff and community to learn and share stories, recognize and commemorate the end of slavery in the United States, elevate and celebrate African-American history and contributions and take action to actively promote equity. And I've also uh, sent that email over. I support that. I, I do too, thank you. Council member Prashela. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you uh, colleagues. I, I agree with all the changes that have been suggested. Um, if somebody has it all written down, if you can just read through the whole resolution and, and that is something we can then pass tonight. I think I think there's no controversy on the changes, but we just had to make sure they're all noted. That's all. <clears throat> Councilmember Feinberg's got her hand up. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Um, I'm. I'm not going to read it. I just want to make one point because we had some emails of before. Um, there are for this holiday, as other holidays, times when people have to work, even though it's a holiday, whether it's um, July fourth. Memorial Day, on those, it's almost all hands on deck in the city, um, but other holidays too. So if Ms. Marshall, I see is on the phone, if she can comment for us how the city handles it when it may be a municipal holiday, how those who may have to work like police, even though it's a, I'm just using that illustratively, 
how that's handled so that they also get the benefit of that holiday mm -hmm. and stop mm -hmm. there. Okay, good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the council. This is Karen Marshall, Director of Human Resources. And if we treat this as a holiday as other holidays, uh, of course, if the holiday um, Juneteenth falls on a Saturday, we will observe it on a Friday. Uh, if it falls on a Sunday, we will observe it on a Monday. So that's how we have other holidays. Now, as regards to holiday pay, if an uh, employee works on the holiday per policy manual, they receive their um, pay, holiday pay straight time, plus time and a half for working on the holiday. And that's out of the policy manual. Thank you for that. And, and so the reason I brought that forward in an email was <laughs> because our refuse and recycling staff um, are generally of our black and brown community, not all, but generally. And I want to be fair in realizing that here we have a potential holiday in the city that is to mark a forward, you know, to, to commemorate a day, but to to move us forward, and yet they are the ones who will be impacted. And and maybe maybe it's okay. And I'm this is this is the hard conversation for people like me. I don't know how to to bring it forward, but I I want to make sure that we are not further uh, disenfranchising people because they have to work, just like we've done with COVID nineteen, and it's been our hardest hit communities who've been forced back into the workplace. But they're they're at most at risk. So I I just Karen I just ask you Madam for Mayor. Good yeah. guidance on that and you know help. I I hear the city manager. Were you trying to comment? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. I was just going to uh, thank you. This is Rob Despirito, city manager. We could conceivably handle this like other certain other city holidays like um, Christmas and and maybe Karen you can help me with whichever other okay. ones there are. Maybe it's New Year's Day, uh, where I don't believe, I think we actually adjust the service day for the public as opposed to just pay the premium pay sure. for that day and well, employees that. must work. Yeah. So we could adjust the day and to make it a true day uh, of, of no labor for right. any of those employees who otherwise would work. Maybe I'll call them um, well, just other holidays where we tend to just pay the premium pay, but we could have this as a true um, day off and as you know that may even facilitate doing some of the other things uh, that have been suggested by the mayor and council in terms of maybe a, uh, a, a day of volunteerism day of service day of reflection day of education and, and other things that may be um, uh, offered so I just I just throw that out but Karen what do you uh, can you recall yeah, what the a, other dates might be um, yeah you could you name them all it's Christmas Day um, New Year's Day, 4th of July uh, was the other date. But I also noticed that um, Craig Seminole, the director oh, of the board, said come up. And I'm Memorial sorry. Day yeah. is one, Karen. I think Memorial Day is one. Yes, yes, Memorial Day is one. Day. Martin Luther King now is one that they take off and it doesn't slide. The county executive uh, handled that by closing the transfer station. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have to comply, we comply with that. So New Year's Day, Martin Luther King, uh, Memorial Day, July 4th, Labor Day, Thanksgiving Day, um, mm -hmm. Christmas Day, and New Year's Day. Those are the ones that they actually observe the day and not just uh, and not come in and work on a day. However, I just want to be clear that the refuse and recycling workers don't get a day off. They right. may take the holiday day off, but they're going to work another day to make up for that. So no matter which option we choose, whether to give them the holiday day off, we'll have to slide uh, collections and I'll have to come in another day to make up for it, or they collect on that day and they'll get the, and they'll get the premium pay when they do that. So I just want to make sure you know that uh, we all know refuse is something that has to get done, and so there'll be another day uh, to make up for that day if we take it off. That's good. Um, Council Member Miles. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Quick question to Mr. Uh, Semino. In the context of, or in the case of like uh, Christmas, New Year's, what, what's the current policy? How do you all adjust schedules then? Um, we collect four days a week now. So if the holiday falls on one of our collection days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, they take the day off 
and then we slide the rest of the week one day later. For example, if the holiday happens on Monday, um, then they collect Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday that week. If the holiday happens on Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday happen as normal, and they take Thursday off, and Thursday becomes a Friday collection. Council Member Miles. Just, thank you, Madam Mayor. Quick follow up question. It's tough because we're we're doing this in the moment. Is there any way to get your sense on what would be the preference of of, of the, the people who actually work those days uh, in terms of what schedule they would prefer or how would they would wish that we move forward with this? Well, I would suggest that I believe I'm not sure which uh, document Miss Marshall was reading out of, but this is uh, this is in our agreement with Ask Me uh, the holidays that we observe. So I would suggest that we uh, discuss it with the union. I don't think the mayor and council need to tell us which what we're going to do on refuse. If you declare it a holiday, uh, yeah. you didn't tell us what to do on the other ones. We can probably uh, talk to the union and come into a, 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 a mutual understanding on what uh, they would like to do and what we could agree to do. I, Thank you. That's all I had. Thank but, you. Yeah, and I'm okay with that. I, I want to be... Um, very fair and I want to be very um, supportive of what people want in this case. Councilmember Feinberg. Sure, I appreciate that. Um, and also to remember and acknowledge that any day we always have a police mm -hmm. presence. Our yeah. police force are always working. You know, we have to remember that too. It's not, mm -hmm. um, while I certainly appreciate the public works commitment and there are always people in the water treatment plant if I, if I am correct. And I see mm -hmm. Mr. Simino shaking yeah. right down my cul-de-sac. Yeah. So I yeah. see you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there may be others that I'm not immediately remembering, but um, I don't know if there's some stormwater management folks who mm -hmm. come out in emergencies, but uh, I would too leave it to staff to give us the mm -hmm. details. To me, what was most important in bringing this forward was us as a city taking action and showing this is something that we want to do. And with the spirit that council member Ashton has mentioned, that is exactly what I wanted. Not that it's a shopping day whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, that's the same thing that I feel very badly about Veterans Day. So many people don't attend and think about remembering those who made the, the ultimate sacrifice or even our disabled and family members who, who suffered uh, those who were in the service for our country and think of it as a shopping day. So um, with all that spirit, to me, it's let's move forward and demonstrate our commitment. Madam Mayor, this, yes. if, I, if I may uh, make another comment in response to um, Mr. Seminole's um, question about the document I was reading from, that I was referring back to the holidays we identify for police officers. So the holidays that I was bringing reading off was response to the police officers. And that is in the policy manual. Okay, Council Member Ashton. Thank you. I uh, wanna just thank my colleagues for uh, even being in this situation to have this discussion to mark this day. Um, when I mentioned the proclamation and had seen that it wasn't on our list, I, I thought, you know, this is, this is the time that we can drive awareness and, and thank you to my colleague for also um, been, uh, proposing it as a, a, a holiday as well. Um, I think the way we make sure that this is not just a day off is that we um, build in the education and the activities around it. Um, and with that said, I did have a chance to look at the activities on packet page 110. I think there are several things that we mentioned in our broader discussion that can, that can further strengthen this, um, uh, whether that's the discussion groups and you know those activities so i i would like to you know have the team revisit the activities we don't have to specifically agree to all those activities tonight but that you look at the large-scale planning that you're doing with the other document we just talked about and see how we can infuse that here um, and i also just wanted to call out um, i really appreciate um, fearless rockville did a fantastic piece on rockville 1850 and it really spoke to um the history of, of our community, of slavery, of where people stood, how people took action. 
um, what was life like. So I, I really appreciate those opportunities. I also had a chance to participate uh, previously over when we were all be being able to gather with the Lincoln Park Historical uh, Foundation and others. So I know in the documents as to collaborate with Peerless Rockwell, I also just want to broaden that tent and see if we might uh, include some of the historically black organizations in our community who have um, who are collecting stories and actively pulling those together to enrich this um, awareness for our city. So if we could add that. And um, I did take notes on the proclamation. I think one of my colleagues asked to read it. I'd be happy to, but I wanted to pause and see if there were any other comments that people want to make on the activity specifically. I don't see any hands, council member. If you could read it for us. Okay. So the resolution reads to designate June 19th, known as Juneteenth or Juneteenth Independence Day as a paid municipal holiday and to encourage programs that celebrate and commemorate the end of slavery in the United States. Whereas on January 1st, 1863, the president, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation setting in motion the end of slavery in the United States. And whereas it was more than two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation and many months after the end of the Civil War before news of the end of slavery reached the state of Texas. And whereas on June 19, 1865, federal troops led by Major General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas with news that the Civil War had ended and to ensure that all the 250,000 enslaved people in Texas were freed. And whereas beginning in 1866, African Americans, I changed the language in terms of calling people slaves who were enslaved in Texas, celebrated June 19, commonly known as Juneteenth or Juneteenth Independence Day as inspiration and encouragement for future generations. Whereas the celebration of the end of slavery, which became known as Juneteenth, is the oldest known public celebration of the end of slavery in the United States. And whereas Juneteenth commemorates African American freedom and celebrates the successes gained through education and career opportunity, addition here, and demands the further removal of all barriers to equality. Whereas the mayor and council wants to recognize the historical significance of Juneteenth Independence Day and the observance of the end of slavery, as part of the history and heritage of the United States by designating Juneteenth Independence Day, a paid municipal holiday in the city of Rockville. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and council of Rockville as follows, that June 19th, known as Juneteenth or Juneteenth Independence Day, is hereby designated now and in the future as a paid municipal holiday in the city of Rockville to celebrate the end of slavery in the United States that the city will mark this date with special events and celebrations to encourage Rockville insertion staff and community to learn and share stories, recognize and commemorate the end of slavery in the United States, elevate and celebrate African-American history and contributions and take action to actively promote equity. And then it says, I hereby certify the foregoing is true and correct. So those are the changes that I captured. I don't know if there's anything else that we missed. Okay, let's just talk through. I see Council Member David Miles. I see Council Member Beryl Feinberg. I don't know who was first. You go right ahead, Council Member Feinberg. Thank you. Are you doing age first, Council Member Miles? I've got to get you. Now, I'm playing with you, please. Okay, so only in the resolution to have the syntax correct, and it's more than syntax, um, in resolute on the very beginning, to designate June 19th, known as Juneteenth or Juneteenth Independence Day as a paid municipal holiday and to encourage programs that celebrate and commemorate the end of enslaved peoples in the United States. Again, taking out um, slavery, Dr. Miles, just as we did in the other part and not as to make it similar syntax. But, but I think there's a difference because we also have the, the same wording in the resolution at the top as we do in the first resolved at the bottom. I think there's a difference in ending slavery and people who had been slaves. I, I think that was what um, Council Member Miles was trying to talk about. I don't know. Council Member Miles. Oh, Wait, let's just finish this one first. 
Okay, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll, 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 I'll uh, apply to Councilmember Feinberg. I'm personally okay with, uh, I guess, um, I guess the, the category or the institution of slavery as a, as a term in the beginning. I think when we refer to people as slaves, that's that's the part I have uh, issue with. So I, I guess I'm on the, you know, whether or not to change slavery, I'm kind of agnostic. I'll, I'll leave it up to you all on that one. Um, so, I'll, and then I have a recommendation later on, but we can finish to Madam Mayor's point, uh, finish talking about this one first. Okay, what, what do you all think about this one? Council Member Prashela. Yeah, Madam Mayor, I was also gonna point out um, slavery when it's referring to an institution. To me, that's okay. When you're referring to slaves, I agree with the change in the language. So are, uh, just to clarify, are you suggesting that uh, celebrate and commemorate the end of slavery is okay in the resolution and the first resolved at the bottom, but the word um, slaves turns to enslaved in the third whereas, fourth whereas? Slaves people, I thought, but um, but anyway, the yes, I mean, slavery is an institution. That's how it's known, and that's how I think it's used at the bottom and also in the first paragraph. Okay, so I, and I agree with that too. So I don't know, are you all okay? I'm fine with that. I just wanted to raise it with heightened awareness. Yeah, no worries. Council and I appreciate that. Council Member Ashton. So are we, just so we have the language clear for people for our city attorney's uh, office, um, are we saying who were enslaved? Uh, because the, the, the wording African-Americans who were enslaved before that, if we're gonna say um, enslaved people, We'll, we just need to flip a few, the sentence a bit more. Council Member Miles. Madam Mayor, I think the recommendation that she made make sense to me, just instead of, um, I apologize, I think that, yeah, her her, her addition, Council Member Ashton's uh, addition to the fourth wire has makes sense, African Americans who had been enslaved, because it's getting, as Council Member Feinberg pointed out, this person first language is African Americans who were enslaved as opposed to Slaves or slaves, uh, enslaved African Americans. I'm, I'm in agreement with that. Okay, so I just got confused and I apologize. Are we saying in the fourth African Americans who were enslaved in Texas, or are we saying who had been enslaved? Councilmember Ashton? Oh, we initially had who were enslaved, but we can, I'm flexible on that. <laughs> okay. Likewise. Okay, good. All right, let's let's go with that. I think it's clean. Not that the action was clean. <laughs> okay, Councilmember Prashela. Uh, was that all the changes that needed to be discussed? Because if so, I would like to move it, but I don't want to move it before we're, okay. we're clear. I, I have three quick things I want to ask the question. The fifth, whereas, Councilmember Ashton, did you insert the word za? After whereas the celebration of the end of slavery, I think I heard you insert the word the. So number five, one, two, three, four, five. Yes, the celebration. Mm -hmm. Yes, totally support that. Uh, second thing, period at the end of the last whereas, am I correct on that? We need to add a period at the end of the last whereas. Correct. Yes. Okay, and last one. Did I hear you on um, under the final resolved on number two? Uh, I, I want to just make sure I say this right. That the city will mark this date with special events and celebrations to encourage Rockville community and staff. Did you delete the the there, or did you keep the the in? I didn't hear. I did not have a the in there. I just That's put encourage Rockville. I put staff and community, whatever order we put it in is fine with me. Yes. To I, and you did say staff and community to learn and share stories, comma, recognize and commemorate. So you took out the word about. Am I correct on that too? Correct. Okay. I, I want I was trying to quickly right. do. <laughs> right. Everybody okay with all of that? Council Member Miles. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I had a question about the sixth whereas if uh, if if Council Member Ashton can read what she wrote, I had a quick potential addition for you all to consider. Sure. Okay, so that one was um, from our mayor. Uh, whereas Juneteenth comm commemorates African American freedom and celebrates the successes gained through education and great opportunity, and demands the further removal of all barriers to equality. Councilmember Miles. But uh, what, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, wanted to put out to 
sort of focus this on the spheres in which we have influence to end that clause with saying, with the, um, I'm sorry, in city government or within city limits or what, what is y'all's thoughts about that if you ended that clause there? Go ahead. So you know where I am on <laughs> some of these issues that we do need to advocate to our county and state at times. Um, I, I'm thinking of just education as one example of those, but um, I, I think that sometimes we're not in the jurisdiction who, had, who can make the change, but we can advocate when our community is impacted. Okay. okay. Oh, I can't speak, Councilmember Feinberg. Uh, I would associate myself with that, and that is the spirit with which I was saying there are many activities that are going on at the county level, and they are ignoring the municipalities. It's sort of along the spirit of what Councilmember Ashton is saying, and I think this is the time we need to jump in with both feet and with some of our other partner municipalities and say, hey there, you got to include us as a, um, a strong... And, and stakeholder in this conversation. So I would support Council Member Miles's addition. Um, I think Council Member Miles was limiting it to the city. And I think Council Member- I'm sorry, you're right. You're right, sorry. Who's taking it more global. You're right, okay. you're right. All right, and, and I'm sorry, Council Member Miles, I usually agree with you, but I'm gonna go with a, um, a wider area because I think we can be leaders in this. And yes, we wanna take it in all sectors of the city, government, everything, but I think we also want to see it go further. That's what I would say. Council Member Prashela. Right, uh, to clarify, um, in order to make it a broader than just a city, it, it would then just be left as it is, right? Without yes. qualification? Yes. Okay, thank you. And the only other thing that I just heard you say, Council Member Ashton, in that particular clause is I, I had deleted, I don't, I don't know what you all think, but I had deleted the word the between celebrates and successes and just said celebrates successes gained through education and greater. I had just taken the word the out, but I, if you all want it in, it could be in it. It just, to me, it made it seem like there were some, but we need more. Happy I'm to go either way. That. I'm fine with that. Not a okay. I am too. I okay. am too. Oh, it works for me. Okay, good. So we deleted that the two as well. Yes. That's a lot of those. <laughs> okay. Council Member Prashela. Madam Mayor, I move the resolution with all the changes as made. I'll second. second. Global it's second on that. <laughs> Global, right. Right. <laughs> I would agree. It's a unanimous introduction. I mean, um, motion and a unanimous. And all the in favor of this resolution, please raise your hand. It is unanimous. Thank you all. I am pleased. Council member. Yeah, Council member Feinberg. Yes, um, I would like to ask that the city, I'm proud of my colleagues and all of us together doing this um, and truly meaning it and asking that um, uh, public information broadly share what we have done tonight. This is only one of many steps that we have to take. Uh, together as individuals and as a body and working with staff. But this is something I think that we should be proud of. I agree. Council Member Ashton. I was going to add to that and know I think we should share with our MML colleagues. I know I can at the county level, and my colleague uh, Council Member Feinberg at the state level, um, just to encourage and, and others to do it, as well as our county colleagues. I agree, Council Member Feinberg. Yes, if we can get a complete um, updated version sent to us, I will be glad to do that at the state M uh, MML board. If we can get a clean copy sent to us. What do y'all think of a press release that goes out? Oh, I, I was meaning that. That is exactly what I meant before okay. when I was speaking about the PIO. I think absolutely it's a press release. Yeah, covers a and, lot and getting it to Bethesda Beat and getting it to Next Door Neighbor and all those other Rockville Patch, all those other outlets, social media. Good, okay. Anything else on this topic? Once again, Ms. Hapde, thank you so much 
for uh, helping us through this, and we will look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank yep. you, everyone. Thank you.